Hi and welcome to Jokkmokk. Um, today I thought I should do a Q&A video. We got quite a lot of questions about our dogs and dog sledding and so on on our movies. So I thought it would be maybe a good time to make a video uh, and answering some of the questions. Um, yeah, so for you who doesn't know who we are, I'm Stina and I run a company called Jokkmokk Eidona up in Jokkmokk in Swedish Lapland together with my partner Matti who is at the moment uh, up in a mountain with tw 28 of our dogs. We have in total 50 Siberian Huskies at our kennel here and um, yeah, we work with our dogs full time and yeah, both doing shorter and longer dog sled tours, both down here in the forest in Jokkmokk and also up on the mountains where Matt is now. So, as I said, we have Siberian Huskies and they are all purebred registered in the Swedish Kennel Club. And one of the questions actually we got is what are the difference between Siberian Huskies and say the Malamutes? <laughs> Got that. As I can say, what I can say is that there are different purebred polar breeds, and the most common uh, dogs that you use for dog sledding today that are purebred is the Siberian Husky, as we have Alaskan Malamutes, Greenland dogs, and Samoyeds. Um, uh, Greenland dogs and Malamutes are bigger than the Siberian Huskies, and they. Uh, and sturdier and more robust and also stronger of course but um, because they are heavier they are also slower they are more like a tractor <laughs> and uh, pull you can pull you like in the same tempo up and down and so on uh, what I've also experienced with friends who have these breeds and also seen on other kennels is that um, <laughs> this is Kotte, by the way. Hey, Kotte! <laughs> he wants to be in the movie. Uh, that they are also more like aggressive to each other, more fighting spirit. And when they fight, compared to the huskies like we have, is that it's like blood spills in every fight. Uh, they get more like blocked, what I have seen. But that's my experience. So maybe you have other thoughts about that. Uh, the Siberian Husky is uh, smaller and <laughs> smaller and lighter and therefore faster and they also easier <laughs> got they want to give kisses all the time <laughs> and therefore they are also a um, little bit faster and they are very friendly and easier to keep in a in a big pack of dogs than with the Greenland dogs and and Alaskan Malamutes. And then we have the white, cute, fluffy Samoyeds and they were used for dog sledding from the beginning but today they are unfortunately uh, bred too much on just being cute and going on shows so there are very few uh, really working Samoyeds today. There are some kennels breeding on and working with their Samoyeds, but they are very few. I would say the most common sled dog today is uh, what we call the Alaskan Huskies. And many people think that's a purebred dog, but it's not. Alaskan Husky is a mixed breed. And then we come to the next question we got, and it's is it true that German short-haired pointers are also inbred with some sled dogs? Yeah, short-haired German pointers are inbred in some sled dogs and uh, they're also called Alaskan Huskies but uh, some call them more like the um, Scandinavian Hounds 
and they also have other names uh, when they have mixed in uh, the short-haired pointers or uh, there's also one called Vosta. I don't know what it's called in English. Maybe it's, a, it's the same word. Um, then they are uh, mostly used for sprint racing when people race very short distance, but the dogs run. <laughs> now got the cons again, uh, but they run really, really fast. Uh, but as they had so short fur, they can't like you can't use them for like really mountain expeditions. Then they are really cold and I need to have more heat and maybe sleep indoors and, and so on or have heated dog houses. Um, the Alaskan Huskies can uh, be very um, <laughs> a big mix of different breeds and uh, if you look at for example the big uh, long distance races like a Ditta Rod or so on uh, the dogs, the Alaskan Huskies they use there are very much alike uh, the Siberian Huskies. And they are uh, well coated and uh, yeah, maybe I think also like the same size. The Siberian Huskies we have are very different in size. Some are much bigger than others, especially the males are bigger than the females. Then about Greenland dogs and uh, the polar breeds, we got the next question and that is I have heard that in places such as Greenland the huskies can be pretty wild and they have a pretty tough existence. But you seem to have a very good relationship with your dogs and they seem to repay your kindness well. To what extent have you developed this way of working yourself? Uh, yeah. In Greenland they have Greenland dogs and sadly the dogs are not taken so good care of. Uh, they're actually many of them are very mistreated by their owners. I think many of them just see them as a tool, a hunting tool to go out on the ices and for hunting and so on. And I have met people who have lived on Greenland for years and I also talked to a veterinary who stayed there for many years and uh, she has Greenland dogs herself and really try to educate the people there how to take better care of the dogs. Um, so yeah sadly they are mistreated and I think that's why they are so wild and also like they have to fight for their existence, fight for food and the strongest survive so I think that's the reason why they are so wild. So what we do with our dogs, which are Siberian Husky, not Greenland dogs, is that um, we have tried to have what we call a flat hierarchy. Uh, the dogs should, uh, should always feel safe uh, together and we can have all of them together in the playground and they are not fighting. And that's because we don't allow them, allow them to have any hierarchy. Uh, if you allow them to have hierarchy, they would fight to be the leader. We say that me and Matti are the leaders and all the dogs should be on a same level. Uh, and that makes yeah, the dogs feel safe. And if, if you have dogs that feel safe and secure and never don't have to worry that other dogs should come and, and attack them, then you get a good uh, pack of dogs. And to be a good leader you have to be able to read your dogs. And by reading I mean you have to be able to, what we say, read the body language of the dog. And uh, you can see how they move their bodies, how they keep their tails, ears, how they move. And by that you can read how they are feeling, if they are feeling scared or on the watch or afraid or yeah. So mm, I think that's what me and Matti do very much and also that you're very clear with what's okay and not okay. We don't allow any fights at all. Uh, it happens now and then but very seldom. So. Uh, and when it happens, 
we get really angry throwing things, not at the dogs, but you throw things so it sounds and and get the dogs to stop fighting. And usually when they hear just us raising the voice, then they <clears throat> stop fighting. So that's good. It's also easier like we have had dogs for so long time and most of the do all of our dogs are born here so they grow up in this environment and with this type of pack culture that we have so they grow into it. It's much harder if you for example want to start with sled dogs and you buy a bunch of dogs already adult dogs from different kennels and put them together in one pack that can be really tricky to get them to get along and and so on so it's lots of work and many years of work behind having a harmonized pack of dogs then we also get a lot of questions about food and feeding how we feed our dogs and I, oh, we actually got some comments on some videos from people saying you have to feed your dogs why don't you feed your dogs and we feed our dogs every day uh, but we don't show it in all movies I mean it would be quite boring if uh, we show feeding in every movie but of course we feed our dogs uh, but then we got questions like how often do you feed or how often do the dogs need water and food and yeah now in winter time uh, we feed our dogs twice a day sometimes more so in the morning we give them some pieces of meat here at home and also throw out some kibbles or if we have some leftovers from the evening meal uh, we give them that too and because water freeze in winter time we have a big water bucket that we fill up with water both in the morning and evening and when we feed the dogs we also pick up the poo and we let all the dogs out in the playground so then they can go drink in this big bucket as much as they want and they're also if we're coming home from training or a tour the dogs also can go and drink water in the bucket in summertime uh, we feed the dogs once a day uh, when they're not in training uh, and then they the water don't freeze so then every uh, kennel has their own water bucket in the kennel with the water he got it got this really cuddly and now it's Nelson also joining in <laughs> Nelson he's one of our younger ones <laughs> or he's the yeah, he and his sisters are the youngest dogs we have now. Yeah, he nails on. He nails on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as I said, we give them some meat and kibbles in the morning or water. And now winter time, we give them in the evening. We shop up, shop up some more meat and they get a mix of kibbles, meat and water. So, yeah, and then we have the next question. How much food does a grown husky need and what do you look for when you buy dog food? Uh, it's individual how much a husky need, depending on their size and their energy level. Just as humans, some dogs have a, have a good uh, metabolism. And so some huskies has are easily fat, never go thin, and others are always skinny, and it's hard to keep uh, keep them in good condition. Uh, so it's individual how much food you give. You have to look at every individual in their self, how much food you give. But I would say now in winter for their dinner meal or evening meal, we give the, the ones who get the most 300 grams of meat, three four hundred grams of meat and then they also get like eight to nine deciliter of uh, these kibbles dry food and the food we give is high energy food uh, which means it's very much protein and fat in it and this is the food you give to hard-working dogs uh, 
if you give this food to a normal house dog they will got, get really fat uh, so it's for hardworking dogs and dogs who's uh, working hard in for example winter conditions where they're outside a lot in the cold and yeah it's really important what food you give them and we have tried different kind of foods and ended up with one of the most expensive ones uh, but it pays off in the end when we tried other foods we got more injuries on dogs and problems and they got too skinny or the coat wasn't good enough and so yeah it's really important to choose the right food and uh, our food is the, the kibbles are mostly chicken based on chicken and the meat we give is a mix of beef and chicken yeah I think that was it about dog food <laughs> then we had the question given that you have a lot of dogs and that the dogs are so important to your livelihood do you have to be careful about their biosecurity in terms of keeping them healthy and yeah of course and it's not only because it's our livelihood but uh, yeah you have to look after your dogs see so they get dewormed every year we deworm them and keep an eye on on the dog shit what in the dog shit you can actually read a lot about how a dog is feeling uh, and uh, yeah so we deworm them every year you vaccinate them not every year but every third year puppies you always have to vaccinate uh, two times when they're quite young um, yeah and if a dog gets sick or hurt we uh, if we can't uh, treat them ourselves we of course take them to the veterinaries um, and yeah Hey Mickey! Hey Mickey! Hey Mickey! Wow! Ha! Ida pinnen! Ida got the stick and Mickey, Mickey wants it but she doesn't dare to take it. Ida! Yeah? Ida! Do you have the stick Ida? Yeah! Yeah Mickey! Oh! Oh! Yeah! And talking about health and reading poo <laughs> we pick up the poo twice a day in the kennel uh, also on tour of course and we got uh, on the last video videos we got many people asking about the poo actually and uh, the question is where do you put all the dog poo in the kennel and yeah we pick up the poo both morning and evening then we put it in the in the weed barrel and then we have a big pile where we empty it and and in this pile we also like empty things like the uh, wooden straw from the dog houses and we also mix it with leaves and and pines and so on from when from our garden uh, that we take from the summer so it becomes like compost and all the shit becomes dirt or soil after some years so and then we got the question where do you do what do you do with the dog poo on the trail on the tours on the trail we dig holes in the snow um no, not just right on the trail we try to make holes like a, a little bit away from the trail and then we put the dog poo and then we cover it with snow again so it doesn't look you shouldn't have a place full of dog shit when you left the camp it should look nice and clean so that's what we do Oh, and then we also got the question about the dogs names uh, how do you create names for your dogs what is the logic behind and what gives you inspiration and does each dog have their unique name um, 
yeah, each dog have their unique name. No dogs that we have had 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 the same name. Uh, even if Matti have had dogs since 1984 when he got his first husky, we have never named a dog with the same name. Um, we name our dogs after the alphabetic order, so each litter um, is named after a litter in the alphabetic order. So we have like Mikke, who really want to take the stick from Ida. He is the, from the M litter and he's Mikke and then his sister is Melly, who we have here at the kennel. And then he also have some siblings, that was Magi and Moomin, that we sold to other kennels. And the young one, youngest one we have now, is the N litter. And yeah, since <clears throat> we have had dogs for so many years, and Matti had his first litter when he lived at home with his parents when he was young, uh, we are now on the second round of the alphabet uh, so yeah and uh, we have now bred Iba with uh, Dallas and we hope to get puppies in about two months but we don't know and that will be the O litter and inspiration to get the name to to create the names uh, we think it's quite funny or I <laughs> because it's usually me naming the dogs Matti can never decide what he wants them to have for names, so usually it's me deciding. And I think it's really funny with human Swedish names. Uh, sometimes not always Swedish names. But uh, yeah, human names is quite funny. And also... But sometimes you find a really good name that you should think that Oh, I'm gonna name these puppies before they are born to this and this and this. But then when they come out, the name doesn't fit to the dog or personality. So then you have to figure out another name that fits. This is Enoch from the E litter and here is Honey. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, then we got a question about uh, do you rec uh, recommend neutering them or not? Uh, we actually haven't neutered any of our male dogs except for Yoni, our border collie. Yoni! Let's see where he is. Yoni! Here he comes! Yoni! So Yoni is neutered. Uh, He's a border collie and he's always running free, so if we didn't neuter him, he would probably breed all the husky females all the time. He's running free with the teams when we're training and on tours and so on, so he's neutered. But we haven't neutered any um, of our other dogs and one reason is we always want to keep the option open to be able to breed on them. Uh, of course, we also have dogs that we know we never would breed on, but it's really expensive to neuter dogs in Sweden, so we don't see, so, see it as a, as a very big problem to not have them neutered, so we don't do that. We have had, we had, had actually females that we have to neuter because of health issues. Um, what I could see with uh, those females and also with Yoni is when you neuter them they easily get fat. You don't need to give them as much food as you give to another dog and they also, what I, we have seen that they uh, don't shed so much so they get thicker coat and that could be both a pro and a con thing. Um, it could be that they get so thick coat that they get way too warm. Uh, maybe not, that's not the really problem for us up here in the north. But uh, yeah, so I wouldn't say it's wrong to neuter your dogs. And I think it's a good idea if you feel that that is right. But yeah, we don't do it. And yeah. So then we come to the last question we got. Uh, 
and that is can your dogs do any type of tricks or are they sled dogs only? I'm thinking of sit, down, stay, walking on leash and those type of things. Uh, yeah, I think no, our dogs are not learned to do any other tricks. Um, they are pure sled dogs. Of course, we train a lot social with them, so they all come when we call their names and jump into their kennels and so on when then we ask them to. But uh, no, we haven't learned them to sit or stay or, or not in, in that way that you do with a, <laughs> a normal house dog. But um, yeah, in the team when we are driving the sleds, of course, we have commands like stop which we in Swedish say stanna uh, and we have the go command that we say okay or yeah yeah and left and right but other other things we don't haven't learned our dogs to sit and play or yeah things like that so no we don't do any other tricks with our dogs they are would say pure sled dogs so yeah, that was the last question for this time. We also got a lot of questions about sleds, uh, the lines in the sled, the harness and dog sledding in itself. But I think uh, that will be a whole video uh, about that instead. Um, this was more focused on our dogs. So yeah, you can also check out videos from uh, how the dogs have it in summertime. We have made like, Kennels videos from the summer here and we also make made an autumn video where we show the autumn training and so on so check out the other videos in our channel and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow give this video a thumb up if you like it and until next time take care bye